Hello there, welcome back to our channel. And today, the topic of discussion is the multi-stage amplifier configuration. So as you can see on your screen, uh, the transistor Q3, R2, R3, R4, and R1 forms one part of the circuit. And this we have covered in our previous modules where we see that such configurations is called as common emitter configurations where we use the voltage division technique to provide the DC biasing for the transistor under consideration. And that sets our operating point or Q point or Q cent point of this transistor biased in an active region. We make sure that the transistor Q3 is biased in an active region where base emitter junction is forward biased and base collector junction is reverse biased. And the emitter resistor R3 is uh, helping us to provide the bias stability against the variations in the transistor intrinsic parameters such as transconductance or the uh, uh, and that transconductance may experience variations due to change in temperature or some other conditions in the circuit. And if the transconductance of the transistor changes, the bias point that you set using R1 and R2 is likely to change. So R3 helps uh, maintain that bias point despite variations uh, in the transconductance due to temperature, etc. And uh, it's a kind of negative feedback that we have uh, seen in our earlier modules that uh, is provided by R3 to maintain the constant VBE across the base emitter PN junction of the transistor. The penalty that we pay is the reduced gain. Uh, Without the emitter resistor, the transistor circuit or in a common emitter configuration is... Uh, uh, minus GM times RC, in this case R2, which is connected in the collector resistance. And with the emitter resistance included, we get rid of GM from the output expression of the gain. Rather, the gain now is the ratio of two resistor R2 over R3. That is our, the, our gain. Now, sometimes uh, such gain provided by a single stage is not sufficient. We need a higher gain. Another reason of using multi-stage amplifier configuration is a proper impedance matching. So this common emitter circuit in the first stage, this is the second stage, including Q2 and the resistor R6. We are going to explain to that. So the common emitter has a moderate input impedance or high input impedance and a moderate output impedance. Uh, but in uh, configurations, uh, like I said, uh, the single stage transistor amplifier does not provide sufficient gain or bandwidth and also will not have correct input and output impedance matching. For example, if the common emitter uh, amplifier has to drive uh, any amount of load, so its output resistance may not be low enough to drive that load. Similarly, uh, there is a voltage source from which we provide a signal to this amplifier. So common emitters uh, input impedance or input resistance may not be adequately high enough so that uh, it, there is a minimum loading on the voltage source right here. Therefore, we need a cascading of st multiple stages together to form multi-stage amplifier. So like I said, we have now put up another amplifier stage, which is called as a common collector. Remember this configuration, including Q2 and re emitter resistance R6 forms a common collector or better known as emitter follower stage. So the voltage VO1, which is the output of first stage due to emitter follower action comes at the VO2 minus one VB drop. Exactly, VO2 is not exactly VO1, rather VO2 will be VO1 minus this VB junction drop. And that, uh, that is the output voltage. 
So common emitters input resistance is relatively high and common collectors output resistance is relatively low. That's the advantage that comes by combining common emitter and common collector together. So multiple common emitter stages as shown can be cascaded with emitter follower stage inserted between them. So first you will have a common emitter, then you have common collector, then you have common emitter here where this output becomes input to the common emitter. And again, you put common collector. So common collector stages are in between the common emitter stages to uh, reduce the attenuation due to interstage loading. So if you come cascade two common emitter directly, there would be attenuation uh, of the signal due to interstage loading. So best option is put the voltage follower or common emitter, uh, the emitter follower circuit, okay? Now what I have done, uh, this circuit we need to implement. So uh, what I'm going to show you is this circuit that I have been implemented using KiCad free circuit simulator and uh, I have chosen two transistors Q2 and Q3. The first uh, stage of this complete circuit as before I said Q3 then there are two registers one in the collector R2 and one in the emitter R3 then another register R1 and R4 they are just uh, there to set the bias point VB of the transistor and the voltage at the emitter VE would be VB minus VBE right here. And the gain of this stage is set by the ratio of R2 over R3. So as you can say, I have chosen 120 ohm here. I have chosen 530 ohm here. Yeah. So the gain is about uh, 360 or uh, five times, about five times, 4.5 times. Uh, is the gain. The output will be about 4.5 times uh, more larger than the input. And uh, the resistor R1 is 20.2k, resistor R4 is 3.8k. Accordingly, we'll generate the voltage right here. Now, the output of the transistor Q3 or the common emitter is VO1, which becomes an input to the second stage that is formed by Q2 and R6. So this configuration is a voltage follower or voltage buffer. So it will provide a very low output impedance and the common emitter has very high input impedance. So that's the perfect condition for driving any kind of load due to low output impedance and getting input from any kind of source due to very high input impedance. So that's the beauty of cascading. Now, what is the gain provided by Q2 and R6? Since it is a voltage buffer, its voltage gain is just approximately equal to one or even less than one in practical situation because output VO2 will be VO1 minus VBE. So the final gain is what you get from this stage. So addition of Q2 and R6 is just for impedance, proper impedance matching at the input and output of this circuit. So what I have done is I have used the DC voltage source with a value of 12 volt to provide the supply to the entire circuit and the VO1 and VO2 can be analyzed. Now this voltage source, uh, is there and I have added uh, power flag is the special symbol from the library just to indicate that, uh, just to tell the keycard software where the power is coming from for this circuit. Now, after doing this, uh, I have picked up these two transistors from the simulation library. So what you can do is you basically click add symbol and the library will open and then I have typed NPN here. So it says you can choose bipolar transistor symbol for simulation only. You can do such a symbol, you can use it only for the simulation. Remember, we are not building any PCB right here. Objective of this model is to explain you what is multi-stage amplifier, what are its advantages, how it is implemented, etc.
the substrate is tied to the emitter. Now there are real parts such as BC548, uh, which has the operating conditions that can also be used. Therefore, we are going to do that. So that's all for this one. And we are going to do that now, another simulation. So what we'll do here, we go back to our circuit. Let me click OK here. Uh, and this time, so like I said, you can place it on the schematic, which is what I have done. So refer to our previous model if you are new to this one. So I, I don't need this. Similarly, I have placed this register. So the first purpose is to do the perform electrical rule check, whether we have connected the circuit properly or not. So click here and it uh, the electrical rule checker software uh, gives us that option. So run ERC, then you have violations, ignore test, okay, the closed, okay. And then you have, uh, we don't have any warnings or errors as you can see that. Again, I perform here. Yeah, we don't have any, uh, there is just a list, ignore test, we spice model issue it says, but just ignore that. You don't have any error or warning. Okay, run ARC and that's it. We don't have that. Violations are zero. So close it. Next is you can run the simulate this circuit in SPI. So click here, SPI simulation window opens up. And now there are so many analysis you can do. So let us uh, do that one by one. So click here, simulation command. Now the SPICE ask you which analysis you want to perform. Uh, you can actually say that I want to do operating point analysis just to see the bias points. Click OK, you can select the configurations here. So I will just click OK and it says that your KiCad schematic is uh, uh, loaded. Now just click run simulation. And here are your results that you can analyze and this one. So you see now there is a, first we see the current through the Q3. This is our Q3 transistor and that's the collector. From In the collector pin of the transistor Q3, we have about seven milliampere. The base, current of the transistor Q3 is 70 microampere. So the gain is about, the current gain is about 100. So the beta of this transistor is 100. You can right click it, go to the properties and see, I have checked that before. So the see that the beta or the DC current gain is 100 for these transistors. Now you have the emitter current of the transistor Q3, which is uh, minus 7.09. This is the sum of these two talk to currents, base and collector currents. Similarly, now go for Q2 transistor. The collector current is 7.34 milliampere again, and the base current is 73.4 uh, microampere. So again, 100 times uh, is the gain. Okay, and uh, yeah, uh, it's like that. Uh, and then the emitter current is the sum of these two transistors. Now look at the voltages. The voltage at the output VO2 at this node, that is the final output is 7.41 volts. So you have this uh, voltage here, about 7.4 volt and minus VBE or plus VBE will be the VO1. We'll check that. VO1 is obviously 8.24. So you see, you got the summation of this voltage plus this junction drop to get your VO1. So VO1 is biased at 8.2 uh, volt and from that you can have the AC voltage swings. Then the voltage at the B, uh, VE is uh, uh, here 850 millivolt plus the VB would be your VB. So look at the VB is 1.67, that's correct. So it's about the drops here are about 800 millivolts for each transistors. And the voltage at VA, that is the node supply node is A, that is 12 volts. So we have, we, we see that uh, the base emitter junction voltage that is VB minus VE 
is about 800 uh, millivolt vb is 1.6 and uh, ve is 850 so approximately 750 millivolt so this junction is forward bias what about base collector uh, this is the n this is the p and the vb is 1.6 and the vo1 is 8.2 so obviously your n is at higher potential than the base uh, the collector is at higher potential than the base and this junction is properly reverse biased similarly check the condition uh, so that's why we can say that the q3 has been biased in an active region because base emitter junction forward bias base collector junction is reverse biased what about this transistor so vo1 minus vo2 we'll check that uh, vo1 is 8.2 VO2 is 7.4, so it's about uh, 0.8 volts, 800 millivolts. So junction is forward bias. What about this? Collector is at 12 volt, and the VO1 is 8.2. So obviously you have a 4 volt uh, between this across this junction, making N collector is at um, higher potential than the base. So obviously by 4 volts. So obviously this junction is reverse bias. So therefore transistor Q2 is also biased in active region. So that finishes your operation or doing the analysis for the transistor uh, operating point analysis. Close it. Just say discard changes and you have properly biased the circuit. How about we try to run the simulation uh, for this circuit and checking the overall performance of this circuit. We can do that, right? So for now, we just uh, do that. We will add the voltage source, which is the sinusoidal voltage source. Before that, we will need to add the capacitances from the emitter bypass capacitance and then the input capacitance and then the output capacitances okay so let me add those values one by one and uh, we can do that right so for now uh, we stop here uh, and uh, we'll perform those transient ac analysis for this multi-stage amplifier in a subsequent module till then stay tuned Wish you happy learning. If you like this video, click the like button, subscribe to our channel, share it with others for a wider reach. I wish you happy learning.